are some of the significant fees or costs a planner should look out for in a hotel contract? Is Barbara, is this something you want to kick, kick us off with? Absolutely. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Sean. And, uh, you know, I'd pick up on the buzzword Lisa mentioned, which is transparency. Uh, transparency is key. And I agree that fair and reasonable is also key. And with that said, uh, it is very important that planners uh, really look at a contract anew, afresh. It's very easy on the in the course of a busy day to kind of glance over provisions and you say, oh, yeah, I know what that means or I know what that says. It's particularly important nowadays, not to say that on either side, there's somebody trying to you know, get one past the other, so to speak, but more so in terms of really understanding the impact of the contract to the organization. And economic impact is obviously key, especially as you're evaluating the proposals that you get uh, in connection with your meeting. So certainly first and foremost, you know, we all look at room rates, but are you looking at additional add-on charges to rooms? Most notably, resort charges, resort fees. The president addressing that in the State of the Union address sort of even elevated what a lot of folks, you know, talk about, whether it be the hotels or the airlines or other organizations that, um, you know, are add-on fees. And I think at the end of the day, while many of us have been talking about these types of add-on fees for a long, long time in connection with energy and cleaning charges and kind of everything else, I think nowadays, um, you know, it's become a, a custom to have uh, bundled pricing, bundled things, right, that you might get. And with that said, often uh, what might be otherwise, what you might think is otherwise included in a room rate, be it the in-room coffee or the bottles of water, is now part of a bundled pricing or bundled package. That's not to say they're good, bad, and different. Every group is different. What I will say is that making sure you're clear on what that amount is, um, hopefully negotiating a confirmed amount, uh, that way it's not you know, the subject to change. And on that subject to change, making sure that the inclusions uh, that are come along with that price, that bundle, are not subject to change unless they're gonna add new things. So getting our arms around it on both sides makes sense. And I think when it comes to rooms, um, certainly that's a thing. The other thing I'll note to you, and this isn't the, a hotel issue, this is a, just a, a general revenue taxation issue. Many of you are accustomed to occupancy taxes, but there are so many different types of taxes now that city, counties, and states could impose uh, on a person's hotel stay. Many of you know this because you check out at a hotel and you get a long folio when you think it's just the one rate. This isn't something that the hotel can necessarily do anything about. But if your folks are price sensitive, uh, that might mean that adding in all those charges might make the difference between staying at this hotel and staying at another hotel. And that said, that might be an opportunity to try to negotiate a better baseline room rate just because you know some of these things might be added on. So just one thought in that strategy. Credit, master accounts, um, a fee to maybe set up a master account. Certainly we're seeing more in terms of ways of deposits and other charges like that. Uh, interest fees, charges, again, we've seen those for a long time as they relate to disputed master accounts. It's something to think about too. Fees to reduce not only the room block, we, know, we all know about attrition fees and the rest, but function space reduction fees. That might be something many of you have a bit thought about, but often can be the case if a group releases space, because if the hotel can't sell that space, then, then there is a loss there. So making sure you understand about whether there are fees there. And then of course, with regard to cancellation, um, certainly cancellation fees, taxation, on room attrition fees, cancellation fees. It's a big, it depends. Location-wise, you've got to check. However, I would probably add to that, that in most instances and in most jurisdictions, uh, the fees are likely taxable. That's a huge broad general statement. Obviously, you're going to want to check on that. But we've all seen the trend from going for you know, not taxable to probably swinging taxable because um, of the revenue needs of, you know, cities and locales. And then some cities imposing, you know, destination fees and taxes and things along those lines. So I think bottom line, and Lisa, you know, from my vantage point on the group side, 
The room rate is just the tip of it. I'm looking at what else the guest might experience, whether it's the guest paying for something or whether it's the group paying for something. To your point earlier, that transparency is really key. Um, no one wants the unhappy surprises, and I know um, least of all the hotel folks. I agree. Transparency and, again, as I said, communication is the key. Um, I'm a big proponent of keeping spreadsheets about things, and it sounds silly, but every time you do something, you have your standard spreadsheet of what cost you incurred at Hotel A, and next time you're talking to Hotel B, you've got that spreadsheet and can say, okay, do you charge for this? Do you charge for that? How much? And then the other thing is the communication part of it. I get so many contracts where groups trying to protect themselves, and I get it, say, you will not charge us for anything not listed in this contract. Well, that's really kind of difficult for a hotel to do because when you're planning your meeting two or three years out and contracting for this, the hotel probably doesn't have a detailed program of what your events are and what you intend to do. So how can they say, we're not going to charge you anything until they know that you're going to be asking for uplighting in the ballroom or until they know that you're going to be asking for rigging or whatever it might be. The better way to approach that is to give the hotel as much detail as you can at the time of contracting as to what kinds of things your program uses so that to the extent possible that can all be included or discussed or provided for in the contract and if you can't do that then build into your contract that the parties will communicate and um, really sit down significantly in advance to discuss the details of those programs so that then the hotel can say if this is the lighting you want uh, it's going to cost you x y and z and then give you a time to say, we can't afford that, it's not in our budget. And so then you work together and say, all right, what we're going to do instead is instead of having this outdoor event that's going to include a lot of outdoor lighting expenses that you don't want to incur, we'll move the event inside where you won't have those additional expenses. Again, it's working together to figure out what each party can afford to do and how much it's going to cost. The hotel doesn't tack on these fees just for fun, it costs them things. And I, I always kind of get a kick out of customers that want to be in a union hotel and then complain because pricing is so high. Well, that's because union labor costs are typically, in most jurisdictions, higher than non-union hotels. So you've got to factor that in if that's important to your event, whether or not you're going to be able to afford all those extras that you want. And again, communication is key. Um, know what you want, communicate early. I'm, often hearing from my hotels that they are very frustrated that an event is less than a month away and they still don't have all the meeting specs. And you know that's very, very difficult. So get that communication out there. As to Barbara talking about taxes, again, that's always an, an interesting thing to me because the hotels aren't going to charge you tax if they aren't going to pay it to the applicable taxing authority. That's not something they're going to put in their pocket. So they're not going to say to you, you have to pay taxes on this just for fun. Um, and oftentimes customers say, well, you have to provide written proof that these fees are taxable. Well, there isn't probably going to be a revenue ruling somewhere from um, the local jurisdiction saying that these fees are taxable. It's just a matter of that the finance department of this hotel knows and communicates with the local government authorities and the local government authorities say you have to pay these taxes. Again, it's not some conspiracy. They're just doing what they have to do. And I think Barbara's right. You should assume that most damages that you're going to pay are going to be taxable. You also need to be very cautious in your contract language in terms of what it says, in terms of things like your food and beverage minimum is $100,000. Well, does that include the tax, gratuity, and service charge, or does it exclude it? You can do it either way, but you need to make sure that both parties have an understanding of that because those are the kinds of things that can sneak up on you. And that's why you should be having in your little spreadsheet that you're making notes about, okay, yes, my minimum is 100000 but on top of that, I'm going to have service charge, gratuity, and tax, so that you can budget appropriately for those kinds of things. Again, this should be a partnership. It should not be surprises. Um, the more information you can share with the party that you're working with, the fewer surprises that there's going to be. Sean? Excellent. 